gamers, what's up? I wanted to get on here and talk to you about a few different news events that are happening right now. I'm just so interested in all this. First and foremost, we all know EA was announced the worst company in America by the consumerist once again, two years running. And I caught this response by Peter Moore, which I thought was really interesting. Well, you got us, consumerist. We are the worst company in America, worse than Halliburton, worse than ExxonMobil. First and foremost, those, those companies were not on the list. So, whatever. Since, as everyone knows, releasing a bad SimCity game with iffy support is far more horrible. Oh, first and foremost, thank you so much for admitting it. We, we appreciate that it took this to get you to admit that you did a bad job. Then, poisoning entire communities, groundwater spilling 300,000 gallons of crude oil in the middle of Arkansas. Uh, thank goodness you let a bunch of nerds angry about the ending of Mass Effect 3 decide that poor video game development is worse corporate crime than literally causing the deaths of untold numbers of wildlife and irreparably destroying the environment. Great call. First and foremost, now you're dissing your entire consumer base. Uh, a bunch of angry nerds. Great, thanks, thanks. Because I, I was angry about what you did to The Sims, about you know a lot of your practices, about your online passes and your redemption codes and your locked out story mode content. You know, I'm angry about that. That's why I voted for EA, and I think it was reasonable given uh, the comparison between EA and the other companies on the list, and the way EA affected me as a gamer. Okay, that's why I voted for EA as the worst company in America. And for him to just call us angry nerds, well, you know what? Screw you, Peter Moore. Screw you. This is just another reason that your company sucks. It was truly an honor that the final contest was between us and Bank of America. I mean, I can really see the similarities between e companies, the two companies. EA makes mediocre video games. Thanks for admitting it. Bank of America committed mortgage fraud and blah, blah, blah. Okay, Bank of America hasn't affected gamers the way EA has. Most gamers, young gamers particularly, don't have a mortgage, don't understand about the mortgage fraud, don't understand about Bank of America. And you know what? More people chose to speak up about EA than they did Bank of America. And that's just how it is. Live with it. Because Dragon Age 2 felt rushed, it is a way more terrible than illegally foreclosing on the house of uh, active duty members in the military. Also, DRM, we belong to in Guantanamo for that. You know, I mean, this goes on and on. Now that we've won this award two years in a row, it should send a strong message that we need to change our ways. Yes, it should, actually. You know uh, what wouldn't send that exact same message, except in a much more explicit manner, would be absolutely force the bosses to listen to and make lasting changes to the way we do business. Yes, that would be nice if consumers actually stopped buying our games. Well, you know what? I, I said that years ago. In summer, we are the worst, but are super glad you have some perspective internet. Peter Moore. Okay, it, it makes me sad that EA doesn't look at this and say, oh my God, look, there is an outspoken group of gamers, people who care about the products we release and the quality, and they're saying there's a problem. You know, I've tried to email EA. You can't do it. Go on their website, look for where you can just email them about a problem you have like with their service, with their, with their practices. You can't do it. There used to be, I remember, because I used to send emails to EA, and you know what? They've made it harder and harder. You can't call them. You can't email them. You can't complain. You just have to buy whatever they shove down your throat, okay? And for them to look at this and say, oh, man, we have a problem we should fix because we need to make our entire clientele happy. Instead of doing that, what do they do? They give us a press release saying, oh, we should feel terrible for voting them the worst company in America. Well, you know what? I, I see you getting this award a third year if, if you just keep, keep doing things the way you're doing them. Because this isn't the way to answer this problem. The way to answer it is to say, okay, we're going to do something to solve the problem, to make the gamers happy, because we want to make every one of our clients happy. The people who have supported us for 30 plus years, since EA started in 1982, the people who have supported us, who have given us their money, who have loved our products that we're shitting on now, okay, we're going to fix things for them to make them happy because that's what really matters, EA. And if you aren't doing that, you aren't doing anything right. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. Fix the problem. But I don't see that happening. So, Moving on. Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, Linda Stinder, a lawmaker, wants to ban violent video games in public places. She says video games can numb children to violent behavior and has announced that she plans to introduce legislation soon that would prohibit amusement parks, movie theaters, bowling alleys, retail stores, and other public places from making games rated mature or adults only available to play. Offenders will pay $10,000 for the first offense and $20,000 for every offense after. Uh, Linda, 
there are no M-rated games in arcades anywhere. Not in your state, not in my state, not in America, not in the world, because the ESRB doesn't do ratings on arcade machines. They only do it for home consoles and PC. So first and foremost, she's trying to pass legislation on games that don't exist. I mean, how many tax dollars are being wasted on this? This is ridiculous. It's preposterous. Uh, following up on this recently, Professor Christopher J. Ferguson, chairman of the Department of Psychology and Communication at Texas A&M, and said in research on media violence has been inconclusive and flawed. Okay, so he's saying that the 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 research done connecting violence to video games is inconclusive and flawed. His quote is: During the past few decades, in which video games have become more popular and youth violence declined to 40-year lows. Nations that consume more video games per capita than the US, such as the Netherlands or South Korea, have much less violent crime than we do. Put simply, there is no good evidence to link media violence to societal violence, certainly not violent crime. So this just goes back to the whole thing of some lawmaker trying to pass a bill, blah, 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 and trying to get that attention, trying to get that push, trying to get people to say, ooh, she cares, and get that vote. And uh, it really makes me sad that that's where politics have gone and it doesn't have to do with serving the people anymore, it has to do with serving herself. This woman is a complete moron, and this bill is a total waste of time and taxpayer dollars, and she should be ashamed of herself. And if you're a gamer, you see this anywhere, you know, send her a letter, I'm sure you can write her. Maybe we can uh, clear this problem up before she wastes our money. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is something I've been waiting for for a really, really long time. If you, if you watch my videos, you already know, one of my favorite games of all time is Flashback, Quest for Identity, and I just saw that Ubisoft is doing an overhaul on it and re-releasing it, and it looks beautiful. I am so stoked. You have no idea how excited I am for this title. And it's been a long time in the making, in case you don't know, 1992, I believe, Flashback was made. It's, I think, one of the, the, the first truly cinematic type games I ever played. Like, it's a, a side-scroller, but at the same time, it really offered you a full-on story. It was action, it was just beautifully done. The character animation was always great and fluid. Just everything about that game was phenomenal, and I'm super stoked. So take a look at this trailer and see what you think, and I'm, I, I just can't wait. Conrad, I'm you. Parts of your memory have been taken and hidden. Find Ian. You're not safe. They... We're being invaded and we don't even know it. You are no match for a creature such as we. What have you done, Agent Conrad Beehart? All right, so one last thing I want to talk about is pricing. And this is something I've wanted to get onto for a while, and I've wanted to get a message out there, and I just want to talk about it. Uh, the, the game console pricing system this gen seems really jacked to me. And as an example, let me explain why I think that. Uh, it's been seven years since the PS3 hit shelves. And I think back, like the PS1, after seven years, was a $99 console. And now, I know you're going to say, well, this is a more advanced system. Okay, that's great, but the PS1 was cutting edge technology at the time of its you know, release. So, no, that's not a, good, a valid excuse. After seven years, the PS2 was a $129 system. See where I'm going with that? Now, we've got the PS3, we've had it out for seven years, it's a $250 to $300 console. And I don't, I don't understand why. I think it's ridiculous, especially considering that the newest models of the PS3 are totally stripped down. They're not even nearly the, the quality of the original systems. Have you seen the Super Slim? I mean, this console is garbage. I'm sorry. 
and I, I, I just can't not say it. I mean, have you the, the top of it just ca chunks back, and then you have to slide it back over. It's flimsy. It just feels cheap. It's an awful system. And all they seem to do with every new iteration of the, the PS3 is they say, oh, we've slimmed it down, and oh, we've stripped off all these, these different functions and these different, uh, thi like, you know, it has two less USBs than it did when it first came out. It doesn't have a multi-card reader. It's not Linux compatible anymore. It doesn't have backwards compatibility anymore. We took it away. And hey, you know what, don't, don't listen to that, oh, it's about the price thing, because they took that away by choice. The PS3 80 gig for USB system was backwards compatible through emulation. Okay, there is software out there that will allow every PS3 to play PS2 games and they choose not to put it on the system even though the PS2 game library is the la largest installed game library of any game console ever created they choose not to let you have the ability to play those games because they want to sell them to you again on their stupid little HD collections or on the PlayStation Network or whatever and it's a ripoff. And the new system just doesn't compare. I won't own the new system. If I can't have one of the original launch PS3s, then there's not one worth owning in my opinion. And they want now because they, they just re, re box it and they put it in a new shell and they put a bigger hard drive in it and they tell you it's still a $250 console. It's seven year old technology. It's ridiculous and there's no way it should cost that much. And I'm not just picking on Sony here. I mean I realize that the uh, Xbox 360 is still $200 for the arcade, $300 for the 250 gig system. But the, the one argument I can say in their favor is at least they've improved the system. The Slim is a far improved console over the original 360 whereas I don't feel the super slim PS3 is an improvement over the slim or especially the original. The original being of course the best system that they released and I just really really can't understand how these systems after seven years and eight years for the 360 have stayed at th this price. We gotta think as gamers what these, uh, these manufacturers are doing to us, what these developers are doing to us because it's really not a fair pricing system as far as I can tell. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is something new. I normally don't touch on like current events and do several stories all in one video. If it's something you like, by all means, leave a comment. Let me know, and I will continue to do it. I'm always willing to look out for you guys, my subscribers. Uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Please be sure to check out NerdCo. It's our new show. I, I don't know if you guys have all seen it. If you haven't, go back, watch the NerdCo videos. I think those are some of the best quality content I've ever released and I'm really proud of them. You can also see them at nerdko.com, nerdco.com. Go check it out. And that's it for now. I'm going to run. I will see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Zillion OP biggest piece of crap in the gaming world today. I just want you to know that you are garbage. I'm glad you got busted and I hope, I hope charges are brought up against you for what you did. That's fraud. I hope you end up in a cell because there are people who really need help and there are people who are really disabled and you shit on every single one of them. You're an asshole.